It seems like every self-respecting video game channel has one of these. A decent logo? No. A website? No. A moderator who actually knows what he's talking about? Can I talk to you for a minute? A few minutes later. Right, a top 10 list of underrated games. But first, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just kidding. I don't think that's ever going to happen. What I do have is some rules. We have rules, you know. First. Yup, you saw that one coming, didn't you? No stacking. But that means that if an entire series is underrated, I'm either going to choose the best of the lot or the entire series. Why not? Second. If a game is well respected within its community, a cult classic if you would, even if mainstream audiences don't know about it or don't like it, it still doesn't count as underrated. Third, this includes games that have gotten less attention than they deserved or were bashed and thrashed, but they were actually pretty awesome. Fourth, this is a personal list, and if you don't like it, we get to ransack your cults then. Those are the rules. But before we kick it off, I have a philosophical question for you. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. If a unicorn wrote a tweet, and then posted it, and then he put it up and deleted it, and then a tree fell down in the forest, does anybody even hear? What he means is that if everyone and his mama thinks the game is underrated, is it really underrated? If you think the answer is yes, then you're probably going to like our honorable mentions. So let's start with those. Kingdoms of Amalur, 2012. I heard you like Skyrim, and why wouldn't you? There are many races for you to choose from when you're creating your character. You don't necessarily have to stick to a class every time you level, because you can choose whichever skill you want so long as you've mastered the one that comes before. Gameplay-wise, there's blacksmithing, enchanting, alchemy, and so on and so forth. You can buy property, there's different guilds that you can join, there's a huge map for you to explore. Oh wait, I think you get it. Kingdoms of Amalur's got all that, and some stuff that I don't think Skyrim has which includes, but is not limited to, pretty intense and rewarding combat, high-stake plot points, and much more. Just saying. If you like Skyrim that much, you might want to give this one a shot. But Alex, the thing about Skyrim is the body. The Saboteur, 2009. So I hear you like GTA. What if I told you there's a World War II GTA in which you're an Irish brawler collaborating with a French resistance in Yahtzee-occupied Paris that comes packed with a delightfully cheesy and over-the-top story that's all about sabotaging Yahtzees and sending them to their graves? Yeah, this game is clunky and ridiculously over-the-top, but shit like this happens in a car race. Son of a bitch! And then there's stuff that feels like it was pulled straight out of an 80s action film. And one of the good ones. Another round for me, mate. Easy, Sean. You'll need a clear head tomorrow. Dirker flew in this morning from Berlin. Kurt Dirker? I thought he was retired. Speak of the devil. Guten Abend, Herr Morini. Always a pleasure to welcome one of our Italian friends to the Fatherland. I was just speaking of my admiration for General Mussolini. A kindred spirit to our own Führer. Your country is fortunate to have such a leader, yeah? Racing is my passion. I find little time for politics. Sometimes racing is politics. No, there is a difference. You must forgive my ignorance, Herr Morini. We Germans are a simple people. Perhaps you would enlighten us further? One's a hobby for rich assholes who can't get laid without a flashy car and a silly uniform. The other is racing. <laughs> Even Arnie would be proud of this one. Phantasmagoria, 1995. When every other amateur noob developer was putting out games that had two or three CDs, Mighty Sierra had this seven CD behemoth of a game written by the queen of video games herself. While everyone knows Roberta Williams' King's Quest series, no one seems to remember this horrifying FMB from the mid-90s. Phantasmagoria had awesome locations, phenomenal music, and pretty disturbing scenes. What more could you ask for? A decent ending? 
can I talk to you for a minute? Primal Rage, 1994. One-on-one -on -one fighting games are still very popular nowadays. Just ask your average gamers, and even if they aren't too crazy about the genre, they will surely be able to name some of the most popular. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, that game for creepy old basement dwellers that's all about boobs bouncing, Tekken, Marvel vs. Capcom, Soul Calibur... King of Fighters, but there is one you can bet your bottom dollar they will not mention, and that's Primal Rage. It was the early 90s, and Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat were all the rage. Hell, even Killer Instinct had to struggle to keep its piece of the pie. But living in the shadow of the heavy hitters, there was a deceitfully complex, endlessly satisfying, gorgeous looking, and criminally underrated fighting game. This game was Primal Rage. And while it might have faded into obscurity by now, being a fighting game enthusiast who has played the most important titles out there, I can say Primal Rage remains one of the most satisfying one-on-one -on -one fighting games I've ever played. Mortal Kombat didn't have shit on this one. There, I said it. Outer Wilds, 2019. Listen, I know I'm an insignificant blot in the galaxy of the interwebs, but 342 views on this video? You really must not give a shit about this title. And yeah, it's gotten its fair share of praise from the hedonists and the ones in the know but I just don't know why you all don't love it. Yeah, it's kind of a niche game, but you really are missing out on something if you haven't played it. So here's my top 10 list for most overlooked games of all times and all genres. 10. Journey to Silius, 1990. So back in the day, everyone talked about the intense, badass, alien slaughtering extravaganza that were the Contra games, but no one seemed to know about this intense, badass, alien slaughtering extravaganza that was Journey to Silius. Yes, Journey to Silius didn't have multiplayer, but it had amazing graphics, surprisingly tactical combat, because you could actually store the weapons you found and switch back to them at any given time, and it probably has my favorite soundtrack of all time. And I'm not even kidding, my dudes. 9. The Beast Within A Gabriel Knight Mystery, 1995 Yet another multi-CD monster released by the best video game developer of all time. Sierra, are you shooting me? Zip it, Gigi Hadid! The second entry in the Gabriel Knight series is a surprisingly awesome FMB, and surprisingly underrated too. Again, while everyone seems to know and love Sierra's Quest series from back in the day, this game's been seriously snubbed. Setting aside the main character's douchebaggery, How strange she likes you! I have a way with women. Douchebaggery level, Michael Bublé. This was a serious detective game brought to you by the wonderful and just as underrated Jane Jensen. By the way, this game had the most killer artwork on the cover. 8. Tainted Grail Conquest, 2021. We'll talk about expectations surpassed, my guys and gals. Who would have thought that the most interesting stories, the most fascinating lore, and the most solid characters in recent memory were hidden away within this obscure indie card-based roguelite? I sure as shit didn't. Tainted Grail doesn't only have some of the most interesting writing I've seen lately, but also killer gameplay and impressive production values. 7. Enslaved, Odyssey to the West, 2010. So I hear you liked the original God of War for the PS2, and who wouldn't? It had amazing graphics for the time, an intriguing story, some of the most visceral combat we had seen up until that point, and masterful integration of puzzles. You know, that sounds every bit like Enslaved Odyssey to the West, except you didn't know about this game, did you? And that's a pity. Enslaved Odyssey to the West was Ninja Theory's modern day take on the Chinese myth with the same name. And it was awesome. Sure, the enemy variety was a little bit lacking, your mcguffin companion was a little too whiny, and the game was a bit shorter than I would have liked. But the fun factor was off the freaking roof with this one. Like God of War, puzzles were brilliantly integrated into the bulk of the gameplay, graphics were gorgeous, and the futuristic yet faithful in spirit narration of the Chinese myth gave me the goosebumps. And holy shit that ending. Just give it a try, guys. 6. Return to Zork, 1993. Just watching this little intro scene that brought back to life the most timeless passage from the original game was enough to make my nipples rise. The original game was probably the most memorable game from the 70s, and though the sequel was a point-and-click FMB, I would say it was almost as difficult as the original. 
this is an epic as fuck adventure that everyone seems to have forgotten about. It had memorable lines, Welcome, Ra! Of course you do. Beautiful locations and a surprisingly interesting minigame. 5. Shadowrun Hong Kong 2015 The entire freaking franchise has always been criminally underrated, even back in the day. But it's the return saga I want to talk to you about. Commenter Burning Sheep brought this quote up. I wrote you a long letter, since I didn't have the time for a short one. Shadowrun Hong Kong is a masterclass in lean narrative and editing. The story is teeming with outstanding cyberpunk lore and masterfully paced. NPCs are quirky and complex, each of them is deeply flawed but also relatable and valuable in their own right. Every companion you meet has an interesting background story and a solid character arc, and the writers nailed the mystery aspect of the story. Shadowrun Hong Kong is a top tier cyberpunk game in every respect and in the story department, it puts to shame almost every other RPG that has come out in recent memory. Almost. 4. Act Racer 2, 1993. So this video game channel made a list of their best games for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and they had Super Castlevania 4 as an honorable mention. And of course, Act Racer 2 was nowhere to be found. That's how underrated this game was. This game was a larger than life side scrolling behemoth of a game that dwarfed Castlevania 4 in every single respect. Graphics were phenomenal, your special skills and moves were off the charts, the level design was incredible, and there were epic bosses and mini bosses everywhere, and they were named after some of the demons we all harbor inside. Gluttony, Langwar, Jealousy. In Act Riser 2, you played a god capable of taking control of statues raised in your honor, and you could even move your sky castle around and choose how to navigate the game. And the final stretch of the game is quite simply the best of all time. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. We'll talk about that sometime in the future. But for now, 3. Shadows Awakening, 2018. This is a top tier action RPG that has been brutally, criminally overlooked by the lot of you. ARPGs tend to have shit stories. The story in Shadows Awakening is actually pretty fucking awesome. Isometric ARPGs tend to rip off Diablo too. This one goes in a completely different direction, throwing in puzzles, multiple characters that you can switch to on the fly, phenomenal level design with rewarding exploration, and tactically challenging boss fights. This game's the shit, guys. Go check out my video on the game, by the way. You won't be disappointed. With the game, anyways. 2. Thronebreaker. The Witcher's Tale. 2018. Are you guys fucking crazy? Why is this game never mentioned in the comments section? This game is one of the best games in recent memory. This game has exploration, combat, incredibly weighty decision making, stronghold management and deck building, and it's all seamlessly blended together into a delightfully cohesive whole. And if you don't show it some love, I'll just have to hit you with a review, my friends. 1. Mountain King, 1983. Pac-Man, Pitfall, Space Invaders, Breakout and Super Breakout, Missile Command, Asteroids, and all those iMagic games of old. We have ceaselessly been hearing about them for the last 40 years or so, but very few have heard of this one. This was the first Metroidvania in all its glory. But Alice, that was not the first Metro- Sim Pip Gigi had did them. First Metroidvania, I said. Mountain King used music. Music in 1983. To tell you about how close you were to the first game's objective. You used a flashlight to pinpoint the location of the invisible flame, and after catching the flame, you had to go to the throne room and summon a, uh, uh climbable skull? It was 1983. You then had to snatch that crown, and then chase it to the top of the mountain as you tried to avoid bats and, of course, spiders. I have one question for you nerds. Is there any RPG that you know where there aren't any spiders? I am genuinely curious about that. But yeah, Mountain King is the king of this hill as well. Top to your old school shit right there. And that's it. And I have nothing more to say to you. Is that it? You're going to enter the list with a game from 1983? Yeah, why not? This channel's meant to be about old shit, right? And this one's old and super underrated. Really? Fine. How about a few... Uh, rapid fire honorable mentions that could have made it to the top spot. That sounds about right. Jade Empire, 2007. That Bioware game you didn't play, even though you say Dragon Age and Mass Effect are oh so good. Play it. Phoenix Point, 2019. The game that does XCOM. Better than XCOM. There, I said it. Neo 2, 2020. I felt like the fuzz died out a little too soon. This game's no Sekiro, but it's pretty fucking awesome. The Quest for Glory series, 1989, 
1998. Every other Sierra Quest series seems to be more popular than this one, and yet, this one may be the best of them. Honestly. Now I got nothing more to say to you. And coming up next is the Black Geyser review. I know, I know I promised the Pillars of Eternity review, and it's on the way. You suck. I know. But I'm kinda in the middle of this one, so why not kill two birds with one stone, right? If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thank you for watching all the way up until now. If you like what you're seeing in this channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to avoid the usual YouTube shenanigans. Share the video, but most importantly, never stop gaming, but don't let gaming get in the way of your hopes and dreams. Bye everyone.